So, in this talk, we're talking about the intangible asset, seeing and hearing the truth in others. Can you hear when someone's speaking the truth to you? Can you see when what someone is saying is true? This is a very slippery skill. This is a funny little skill. And we're going to break this down so that it's clear for you because it's one of those things that can get you into a lot of tangles if you're not aware of it. <laughs> this is one of those assets that is a very bad liability if it's not working towards you as an asset. So here's how it works. There are only four things that people talk about. They talk about themselves. They talk about you. They talk about other people. And they talk about life. And in the category of life, we can put everything else. We can put psychology, philosophy, religion, events, theories, ideas, stories, all the rest of it. Now, here's the funny little thing. There is a mismatch between what people appear to be talking about and what they are actually talking about. Which means that for all of these four, there is a combination of three other things that they could be talking about. Right? Sorry, four other things, because it could be the exact thing that they are talking about. <laughs> right? So when someone is talking about themselves, they might be talking about themselves, but they might actually be talking about you. And when they're talking about themselves, they might actually be talking about other people. And when they're talking about themselves, they might actually be talking about life. And you can see very quickly how this becomes complicated. <laughs> this comes, becomes something that's very much, there's so many different combinations, you don't know which one it is. Because of course they can mismatch and change halfway through. Sometimes when they're talking about life, they're really talking about themselves. When they're talking about life, they're really talking about you. When they're talking about life, they're talking about other people. And sometimes that will change halfway through the conversation that you're having with them. <laughs> so how is it? How is it to know? How is it that you're going to know? And the thing is that while it's true that there's a mismatch between all of these things, you do also have to understand that this trap or this pathology is a little bit like the dark side of psychology, right? This is the tangle of psychology. This is how psychology gets turned into a mechanism of mistrust, a mechanism of even attacking a kind of aggression, a kind of intellectual aggression. And you can see this in a sort of passive aggressive assault that someone can put on you when they're talking about other people and really they're talking about you and you know that they mean you, but they're talking about other people and that gives them a license that pretext, that sort of face, that, fa that false mask gives them the, the, the license or the pretext to be nasty towards you. And there's a hundred and one ways, a thousand and one ways in which this psychology is turned into a pathology or an instrument of intellectual hurt, mental mind games, 
And this really is the dark side of psychology. This is the, the mistrust that is between relationships. This is how psychology comes in and makes a mess of everything. So don't, don't be thinking, oh, now I don't know which one it is. When people talk about themselves, whether they're talking about themselves for real or me or other people or life or something else, don't have that takeaway. That's not the takeaway. The actual intangible asset is seeing and hearing the truth in others. Now, there's another funny sort of illustration that goes along with this. Two people go to relationship counseling and they sit down and the counselor says, well, what's the problem? And the first person goes, well, they are mean. They are hurtful. They do nasty things. They are horrible. They are bad, right? And then the counselor turns to the other person and says, well, what's the problem? And the second person goes, well, they are mean, they are hurtful, they are bad, they do all these nasty things. And they don't do the cleaning. And they're being narcissistic. And they're not being truthful about themselves. Now, of course, from there, the counsellor is going to say, now, talk about yourself. Talk about your own feelings, talk about your own experiences. And the counsellor is going to do that for both sides. And it's going to be a spectrum of depth by which the people in that relationship can do that. <laughs> so it's going to be a process. But what's going to happen is this exact unfolding of this psychological phenomenon, which is that when people are talking about themselves, they're not necessarily talking about themselves. And when people are talking about someone else, they're not necessarily talking about someone else. And so on and so forth. So this unwinding, this unraveling of the tangles within psychology is the key. And this mechanism, this intangible asset of hearing and seeing the truth in others is exactly the thing that helps with the unraveling. It allows the unraveling. And it goes a long way just to make it explicit, to make it real. Like, are you talking about yourself right now? Talk about yourself. Ready, set, go. And you can do the exercise across all things. Talk about me. I'm going to talk about you. Ready, set, go. Or talk about others, right? This is where the quintessential gossip circle comes around when people get together and they start gossiping almost having a bitch like oh do you believe that person did all that or that person's like this he 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 right we have a sort of commonality between us we're gossip friends because we talk about other people well there's something in that and of course the thing of talking about life, that's very deep as well. And people make assertions of truth about what life is all the time. You don't have to listen to them for long for them to say what they really think life is like. What do you think life is like? What is life? What is the truth of how things are? What is the truth of things as they be in this world? Now, whatever you say, I can say in response, well, that's just your experience. That's just your life. That's just how you see it from your perspective. Right? Now, this is another sort of funny trick, which is, that's just your perspective. <laughs> You've heard that phrase before, haven't you? It seems to be the kind of phrase that would end all arguments. <laughs> right? If you're having an argument with someone and you want to end the argument, you can just say, well, it's just your perspective. 
And it sounds like you're being respectful, right? It sounds like you're being accommodating of the other person. That's your opinion. That's your perspective. I'm putting it back to you. But this is just another psychological tangle. <laughs> because it is not just your perspective. It's also the truth. And of course, further still, you do have to bring a little bit of awareness to this thing of subjectivity and objectivity. There is something in that. So to sort of allow this to be something more practical, because that's a lot of psychological tangles, which we've sort of made clear in a sense. I, I hope it's made it clear, right? Like the reason I'm discussing these psychological tangles is so that we can laugh at them and we can brush them off, right? So if you're not aware of these psychological tangles or you've never really encountered them, then don't, don't create a tangle out of them, right? Don't bring them into a relationship or a way of listening to someone. That would, be, that would be seeing and hearing the truth in others as a liability, not an asset, right? So just be careful with that and just be all right with that. And really, there's a few things that we can do to sort of transmute this asset. And that is to understand that this thing of Accepting and rejecting what people are saying is not the right mechanism. It might appear that hearing and seeing the truth in others means listening to what they say and then deciding, okay, well, some of that wasn't true and some of it was true. So I'll accept the truth and that way I can hear the truth in what they're saying. And that's wrong. That's not right. That's still under this guise of accepting and rejecting. And hearing and seeing the truth in others has neither of those. Hearing and seeing the truth is not any sort of judgment. And it's not any sort of acceptance, right? Acceptance and rejection go together. It might seem like, well, okay, how about I just accept everything that they say? And there is sort of some wisdom or there's some logic to the intuition to say, well, if it's not a matter of rejecting and accepting, then what I should do is accept everything that they say. That's not exactly right either. The intangible asset comes in just beyond that. And it's more like, it's more like accepting as you exist in a field as their words come out of what they are. So the words are coming out of the person, it's coming out of what they are, and you're sensing how that sounds within the field. It's almost like the difference of hearing someone talk and that's all you hear versus hearing someone talk, but you also can hear the background. You can also hear the ambience of the city. You can also hear maybe a fire truck goes past or a bird sings in the window or something with the weather happens some wind comes. And when you can listen to someone talk, and have an ear out for the ambience, then that means you're starting to go into the sphere or the field. You're starting to sense the omnipresence that you have in that situation. And omnipresence is really the secret to hearing and seeing the truth in others. And it's very, it's very different to accepting or rejecting. 
We could say it's a more, it, it's a real accepting, but that's just a matter of talking. Now, there is also another thing to be aware of beyond just accepting and rejecting and using omnipresence to transcend that. That is the difference between energy and words. Words are the sound that you make with your mouth that goes out through the air and lands on your ears. Energy is the resonance inside your body. And the connection is to say, well, how does that person feel about saying that? For example, someone can say to someone, I love you, but they don't feel the love. Right? That would be, that's a crude example, but it's a very obvious example of the mismatch between words and the energetic field. When someone says, I love you, is the energetic resonance there that goes with it? And this is also a, a, a funny little generic relationship uh, tangle, right? Which is that one person says, oh, I love you, I love you. And then the other person says, I don't believe you, you don't really love me, right? <laughs> And of course, the truth in that situation is that they don't love that person. <laughs> but they don't know it themselves, right? Now, there is a lot to be said about resonance and the energy field. We're going to go more deep into energy later on in the course, but that at least is one little example that's related to this particular intangible asset. And... Another thing I will say, and it might be the last thing we have to say on this intangible asset, is that people do still lie. And they lie on every level. They lie without knowing that they're lying. They lie knowing full well that they are lying. And they lie as an incompleteness of knowledge. And they can lie about themselves. They can lie about other people. They can even lie about you. And they can lie about life. So non-truth still does exist. Right? You still have to make that distinction. So don't think that omnipresence as an accepting of what someone is saying is going to allow you to just negate completely when someone lies. No, when someone lies, they're lying. And in fact, when you sense things energetically and you listen to them in terms of omnipresence in a full accepting, then you can much better sense when they're lying. Then you can really tell that someone is lying and how they're lying. Now, of course, lying is its own sort of subject, right? And I shouldn't really say, I mean, lying is not really the right word. It's more like non-truth. Lying is a, is a smaller, it, it's a smaller phenomenon than non-truth. And I know Sam Harris has a book on lying, which is exactly about this, right? And he's taken the word lying to include non-truth. So he's sort of expanded that word and that definition and gone into these exact mechanics. Whereas really I want to put lying back into its smaller definition and have non-truth as the phrase that we use. Because non-truth is like, you might say something about yourself which feels true, but it's incomplete to your own self-awareness. Right? You might say something about your feelings like, I feel weak. 
And to you that resonates as truth. And yet with your vantage point and your awareness, you can see that I'm actually speaking a non-truth about myself. And you might say, well, actually, no, you're not weak. You're just tired. You're actually very strong and you're tired. And in that situation, I would be having to draw upon my intangible asset of hearing and seeing the truth in someone else by having a real pure acceptance of what they say in order to reveal something about myself. And you notice that is someone else talking about me, right? That is someone talking about you. Or however, however the scenario goes, right? If it's me talking about you or you talking about me. It's really just an example. It's just an illustration. And really, when you have people that are aware of these mechanisms, which doesn't take much, you really find strong relationships and you find a lot of truth. You find a lot of truth about yourself. Because it's not just you talking about yourself. It's also someone else talking about you. And it's also someone else talking about others, which includes you. And that also then goes on to talking about life and what life is. Right? That's the deeper truth. What is life? Can you hear the resonance of the truth when someone tells you how life is? And to hear the truth is a real art unto itself. It's a high level art. This is second tier consciousness stuff, right? Most people don't hear the truth. Most people are stuck in this thing of accepting or rejecting. And it's quite tricky to get out of because you think that you're open minded when you have this component of accepting. You have this component of, yes, I could take this in if it was truth. So that's hearing and seeing the truth in others. There's a lot of mechanisms in that. It's quite psychological. So <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this talk. And when you're ready, of course, we continue on the course. We're getting through it. We're getting into the meat of it, right? I know it's long, but we continue on. There's a lot to go through. I mean, you really want, don't be, don't be overwhelmed by how much there is, because remember, this is your wealth we're talking about. Be greedy when it comes to interior wealth. Be greedy when it comes to wisdom and knowledge and insight. You want to have an overflowing of insight, infinite knowledge, infinite wisdom. So that's why we continue on and we won't stop until we get enough. <laughs> so when you're ready, you can jump on into the next talk.